Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. So each day, I've selected a composer who's had a role to play with both organizations, and today it's the Russian-American composer Igor Stravinsky. Born in 1882, died in 1971. He was not only a composer, he was a conductor, he was a pianist. I remember back in the 1960s when I was in the Minnesota Orchestra and Stravinsky came to conduct. And what I remember, I mean, it was just a great honor for us to have this wonderful composer with us. And he conducted the slow pieces and his friend Robert Kraft did the fast pieces. And it was a, a night that I will not forget because Stravinsky in the middle of conducting got lost and stopped. And in that scratchy voice of his called out a rehearsal number, number 72. And we all found it and, and we started in again and finished the piece. This was a ballet of his called The Fairy's Kiss that um, had happened. Uh, he, of course, was known for the ballets that Diaghilev had commissioned from him, The Firebird, Petrushka, and Rite of Spring. Rite of Spring, 1913, premiere in Paris. And I remember talking to my friend David McKay Williams. David was the organist at uh, St. Bartholomew's Church in New York City on Park Avenue for many years. But he was studying in Paris at the time of the premiere and I asked him, did he know anything about it? Well, he said, you know, I was there at the premiere. And of course I was like, what, you were there? And he said, yes. And he said, I sat in the box next to Puccini and Debussy. <laughs> and of course I was just astounded. And I said, you saw them? And he looked at me and just said, well, yes, but why were they together? Such diverse styles. And he said, the premiere was wild but it wasn't that wild. He said, you know, Stravinsky had paid off the press. And so they were there, he said, because the next night, the same ballet was done, total calm, nothing happened, but it gave Stravinsky a great notoriety. So he composed those pieces, but he also did some choral pieces. He did Oedipus Rex, and then in 1930, he did his Symphony of Psalms. Uh, the Symphony of Psalms is a wonderful piece. He based it sort of on three chords. So let me explain. You can have minor chords or major chords, you know that, and you can therefore have intervals. So a third, like Do, Re, Mi, could either be a minor third or a major third. So what he did is he built this piece on two minor thirds and a major third. So you have this minor, and then you have this minor, and then you have this major. So when you hear this piece, you'll hear at the beginning of the third movement when they are singing Alleluia, you have And the choir sings. But against that is. And so the orchestra just keeps playing. And they sing. There's your minor to major. It goes on later and becomes very fast when you suddenly begin to hear it go. Etc. And then finally at the end, it comes back to that serene kind of ending and you hear them go, the orchestra is playing over
over and over this ostinato and the choir sings. And finally, having done that, they come to the very ending and it's the Alleluia from the beginning. And that ends the Symphony of Psalms. Well, early in life, he, Stravinsky was, of course, very enamored by the music of Rimsky-Korsakov. And in 1907, he was staying at his villa, which was actually in, that, in those days in the Ukraine, and he wrote a piece for wordless soprano with piano, a piece called Pastoral, and he dedicated it to, Stravin to Rimsky-Korsakov's daughter, Nadia. And so I thought it'd be nice to hear this, un, this piece with wordless soprano. And who better to be the wordless soprano than our dear friend Maria Jetty? So here is Pastoral 1907 by Igor Stravinsky. But Philip, although it is wordless, I do have an option of French or Russian. Oh. And my wordless syllable will be the Russian. Ah. Have a wonderful day.